Okay, good evening chess friends. This is FIDE Master Dennis Monacrucis, and today we're going to take a look at a very interesting and even peculiar opening variation that I, I like to try it out every once in a while. N not in games that really matter. Uh, I don't know that I'd have the guts uh, for that, but, but certainly for games at the club, blitz games, and, and the like, I, I think it's, uh, it's a very interesting, entertaining, and dangerous opening weapon. So what I have in mind here is um, a variation of the bishop's opening that tries to transpose into the king's gambit declined. And um, well, we'll take a look at a, a very short game that I played a few weeks ago. And um, my opponent was uh, just a 1600, a talented, pretty young player. So um, you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, there will be a 2 at the beginning of his rating soon enough. But uh, for now, um, obviously there was a, a significant rating disparity, but it's more not, not so much to show off. There's not really too much um, that's to be seen in the game as far as the actual moves. But in terms of the uh, the side variations, it's uh, it's a really remarkable game. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. All right, I had white, e4, e5, bishop c4. So that's the characteristic move of the bishop's opening. Knight f6, not the only move, but a perfectly good one. d3, bishop c5. Knight c3, d6, and now f4. And so here we have our King's Gambit declined line. Now, in this position, the uh, most common move, though not the move that was played, is knight to c6. And now uh, knight f3 is typical. And then here, black has a choice between several moves, the, the two most popular of which are bishop to g4 and a6. And um, on a6, I think white's best is probably to play f5, trying to shut in the, uh, the bishop, hoping to play bishop to g5. Oops, uh, they didn't mean to do that. Sorry, bishop to g5, knight e5, and so on, especially, of course, if black is castle kingside. So here, black generally plays h6, and then queen to e2. And the idea of this is to play bishop to e3, and swap off the bishop so that white can castle. Now, um, so you can see that both sides have to uh, suffer trade-offs here. So going back to this position, white has two things they would like to play. One is f5, which um, locks in the bishop on c8 and frees the uh, diagonal for the bishop to go to g5. On the other hand, white would also like to play the move. Let me get rid of this. Oops. There we go. White would also like to play knight to a4, so we can swap off this bishop and then castle. So the problem for black here is that he can stop one move or he can stop the other, but not both. Okay, so I, I mentioned a little bit about a6. The second move is bishop to g4. So now the bishop does come out. The other, of course, main point behind um, white's f5 is to lock in that bishop. And so after bishop to g4, then, of course, white plays knight to a4. This is the usual move. And uh, here, too, black has some options. So you can play bishop to b6, but this is essentially giving white what he wants. It takes, takes, and then simply castles. And white has reasonable chances for an edge here. Black can also try to castle straight away. And then after knight takes c5, d takes c5. Um, it's a very important move. OK, not yet. So first castles. Queen d6. And now the important move, which uh, isn't in the databases, uh, I don't think, but um, was mentioned on chesspublishing.com last year, is queen of d2. And this seems to be a very good move and perhaps gives white some edge here. And the idea is, um, well, of course, if e takes f4, simply queen takes f4. And uh, breaking the pin proves quite useful as well. So here I think white probably does have a slight advantage. Okay. So going back to the position after move five, that's a little bit about what can happen after knight to c6. But there's a, a more pressing concern that needs to be addressed, and it's in fact uh, one that shows up immediately after my opponent's move, knight to g4. And now black uh, is playing simply to punish white for what seems to be his rather extravagant play. I mean, black puts his bishop on c5, this dangerous diagonal. And what does white do? Well, two moves later, he extends the diagonal. So th this is, uh, seems to be a prescription for trouble 
white is um, acting as if the placement of black's pieces, especially that bishop on c5, simply doesn't matter. But after knight to g4, now white has uh, some genuine concerns here. Of course, the threat is simply to drop this knight in on f2, after which uh, white is going to have some serious problems. Now, white could play knight to h3, it's true. This is legal, but it's not especially attractive after queen to h4 check. Black um, doesn't have to worry about g3 because the knight on h3 is going to hang. And um, so white is going to have to move his king, let's say, to f1. And then after knight to uh, f2, queen e1, bishop takes h3. Uh, this position is simply hopeless for white. So knight to h3 is uh, definitely no solution to white's problem here. Now, as it turns out, there is a good move here for white. And it's uh, the very aggressive f5. Now, this is a kind of a remarkable move. The idea, though, is, um, well, we're simply threatening to capture the knight, first of all, because, once again, we've, we've blocked the bishop from c8. And as we'll see, um, white is also going to cramp black and is going to counterattack himself on this uh, f7 square. Okay, well here, uh, black has no sensible move other than knight to f2. Because if he plays queen h4 check, simply g3, and it's uh, really not clear what what um, black is up to here. Um, if bishop to f2 check, let's see. So here I'm kind of figuring things out. All right, so what happens? Okay, if king to f1... Bishop takes g3, of course this is the point, but simply h takes g3. Uh, after queen takes g3, I don't believe that black has sufficient compensation after, let's say, queen to e2, maybe queen to d2, but basically any move like that. And if black takes the rook, then simply queen takes g4, and uh, white, white is just winning in this position. So, um, if that's not working for black, then queen h4 check is no good. So the only really important move here is knight to f2. And now white plays queen to h5. And here I would suggest quite, quite seriously that you stop the recording for not just a few minutes, but for a few hours or maybe a few days and try to figure out uh, what black ought to do. So I would suggest handling this, this task in, in two stages. So the first stage would be simply figuring out all of the um, all of the candidate moves here, all the viable candidate moves, and then getting to work on, on the analysis because um, it's really very intricate. And if you're doing it yourself and not using a computer, it's a lot of work. I, I think it's fascinating work, and um, it will be extremely beneficial to you. But um, it, it is a tremendous amount of work nonetheless. So uh, definitely take your time. You know, spend as much time as you like on this. You know, I hope you'll come back and listen to the rest of this program. But um, I think it would be a, a fabulous exercise. I mean, really something that would be extremely useful and uh, very entertaining. Okay, so go off, enjoy yourself, and um, come back when you're ready. Okay, and I'm going to assume that much time has elapsed and you've diligently done your work. Or you simply want to be entertained. Either way, it's fine. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the possibilities. So here I think black has at least four or five moves that merit some consideration. So just to enumerate them quickly, there's simply castling. It's one way of protecting the f7 point. There's playing queen to e7. And this looks kind of funny because it invites knight to d5. But the point is that after queen to d7, now there's no bishop to e6 to, to be concerned with. Okay, So that's... The contrast, of course, with queen to d7, when now knight to d5 doesn't gain a tempo, but white has bishop to e6. There's also d5, and occasionally moves like this can prove useful. The point here is that it, um, it, it's kind of an interference motif, that if white plays bishop t takes d5, then the knight can't use that square, and conversely, if the knight goes to d5, well, then that gets in the way of the mate threat on f7, and so that gives black a little bit of... Uh, freedom there. And then finally, there's the move that was played in the game, which is g6. Okay, well, let's hit these one at a time. 
All right, so let's let's start with castling. Okay, now white should just play knight to f3, developing a piece, threatening to, to save his rook. So, um, okay, if black plays knight to d7, this is possible, but it gives white the chance to save the rook. But let's let's look at the uh, aggressive approach here. So knight to g5, knight to f6. All right, so that stops the mate threat on h7. Um, and just brings another piece into play, gains a tempo. But remarkably, white has uh, a very, very powerful continuation here. So first of all, the right way for white to capture on f7, I believe, is knight uh, with, with a knight. So knight takes f7. And now, okay, if black takes the queen, white takes the queen with check, king h8, knight f7 check. And here, black might as well grab, but then takes, 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 and white is winning in this position. So uh, material is close to even. White's only up a pawn. But hey, it's a perfectly good pawn. The knight on h1 is in a little bit of trouble. And so white should be winning here in the long run. But going back here, queen at e7 is much more, much more challenging. And now um, white has a way of winning, maybe only one way of winning. And it's a, it's a really beautiful idea. So well, again, let me challenge you to uh, here just take a, a minute or so and see if you can figure out what white to move ought to play. So it's, it's really quite nice. Okay, well the answer is this. So we start with knight to d5 and um, of course queen takes f7 is no good because knight takes f6 check and then the queen on f7 is going to hang. So knight takes d5 is the only sensible move and now not bishop takes d5 but knight to g5. Very beautiful. Uh, this enables bishop takes d5 to come with check, and it's a tempo gainer because white is threatening queen takes h7 mate. So um, black really has nothing so great to try here. Maybe g6 is best, protecting h7 with the queen, while hoping to gain time with the attack on the uh, on on white's queen. So bishop takes d5, king h8, f takes g6, and now. Um, if knight takes h1, uh, I believe simply knight takes h7 should be good, but also knight f7 check uh, as well. Looks quite strong. So knight f7 check, all right, the point is that we're threatening queen h7, and even on king g7, that's not really very good because takes, takes, or takes king up and then bishop to g5 is mate. So after knight f7, black needs to take. And then we take with the bishop. And again, we've got the threat of queen h7. And uh, I believe this is at the very least going to win black's queen. King g7 takes. If king f8, then we have various mates. And if the king goes to f6, then queen h4. And uh, actually, this is going to lead to uh, to mate. We don't need to bother with the... Um, with the queen. Actually, queen h6 is even easier. King f8, bishop g5, mate. All right, so we see here that um, knight takes h1 is no good. So black should try bishop to g4, queen h4, knight h1, queen g4, queen f6. And after a series of exchanges is completed, white still up a pawn. At the end of the day, has the bishop here. Black's knight is still perhaps going to have some inconvenience in, in coming out of the box. So white is winning in this position. Okay, so <laughs> this was from knight f3, knight to d7, and, and knight to g5, knight f6, knight f7, and so on. Um, but there's also knight takes rook here. And so this one is uh, much easier to dispose of. So knight to g5 h6, absolutely forced. And now perhaps the uh, most elegant win begins with bishop takes f7 check. Okay, so now first of all, if king h8, there's a, a nifty way for white to finish the game pretty quickly. Take a few seconds, see if you can figure, how, figure this one out. Okay, the answer is a little, little two-step here by the white queen. Queen g6, threatening queen h7 mate. Black could play queen takes g5 and survive to a, a dead lost position, but at least one where there isn't an immediate mate. But 
Okay, after h takes g5, then the queen just retreats to its original square h5, and that's checkmate. So after bishop takes f7, black needs to play rook f7, and now queen, h, uh, queen f7 check, king h8. And now, again, this is a, a nice position to try to figure out how white's move should win. Again, it's a position where there are probably several wins, but a particularly nice one, I think, is with f6. And here's the idea. Okay, so first of all, we're threatening queen takes g7 mate. And so that's, of course, what would happen on h takes g5. All right, so black can either take the pawn, um, take the pawn on f6 with either the queen or the pawn, or play queen to g8. So let's go through these one at a time. If queen takes f6, queen to e8, followed by queen to g8 is checkmate. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, I'm hallucinating here. I think you have a different line. Sorry. Uh, it's just main next move. Queen f8, queen takes f8. Um, okay, a little bit past my bedtime, I guess. Uh, second line, g takes f6, simply queen h7 is mate. And then finally, if queen to g8, there are actually, uh, again, a couple of ways to win, but queen g6 is, is best. Now the threat here is f7, and after the queen leaves, to play queen h7 mate. All right, if uh, g takes f6, then we have mate like this. And on h takes g5, this is, uh, there's two ways to win here. So you can play the immediate f7, or even a little bit more elegant, queen h h5, then queen e8, and then f7, and uh, bad news for black. Very bad news for black. All right, so that, my friends, is how we dispose of seven castles. But there are other moves. So queen e7, knight to d5, queen to d7. And here, it looks as if maybe black is, uh, is okay. But, okay, we can see that there's this weakness on the f6 square, that this is something that we should try to exploit, and the dark squares in general. And so white begins with the move f6. The threat is to take on g7 and then play knight to f6 check, forking everything. So black should play g6 here. All right, queen h6. And um, now let's say rook f8. The white rook on h1 isn't going anywhere, so black can take a timeout for these, these moves. So queen g7, and now queen g4. This actually has a, a real threat, queen d1 mate, as well as queen takes g2. Uh, it also clears some squares for the black king to run away. Maybe this can happen. And um, of course, the knight on eight, the knight on f2 is still hitting the rook on h1. So it looks as if black might actually be in pretty good shape. But it turns out that this isn't the case. So white begins with bishop to h6, which stops the mate and threatens queen takes uh, queen takes f8 with mate in three. So queen f8, queen e7, queen c6. So knight to d7 is probably the best. And now b4. So white is undermining the props out from under the knight on f2. And after this series of exchanges, black has regained uh, some material. Actually, black is doing fine on material for the moment, but his rook is in quite bad shape. All of white's pieces are out. And um, in fact, white is winning in this position. So still some complications, but uh, essentially white's attack is, uh, is the more dangerous of the two. All right, so that's uh, what happens on the move queen to e7. Well, let's consider briefly the immediate queen to d7. Here, though, we'll see the problem is simply bishop to e6. And um, if the queen leaves the protection of the, uh, the bishop, well, it'll be taken in most cases. And there's also, of course, the threat of queen takes f7. And um, black isn't really equipped to handle both of these problems. So queen e7, knight d5, and now g6. So this gives black a little ray of hope, but it's not enough. Queen h6, black's queen is still under attack, and white would like to bring the queen into g7. So queen f8 looks right. Now bishop takes c8, which doesn't only take a piece, but threatens to, uh, to garnish the rook on a8 as well. So black needs to play knight to d7 to give his pieces some flight. Bishop b7 takes and takes, rook b8, bishop c6, knight h1. And the bad news for black at the end of the combination is that white is also picking up this knight on d7. And in this position, white's got two pieces. 
for the rook, and the knight on h1 is possibly a goner as well. Um, it's not clear that black wants to take on c2, because if he does that, then rook to b1, and then he has to worry about uh, his back rank as well. So uh, lots and lots of problems here. Also, instead, maybe uh, bishop to g7, and then bishop to f6 check, and then rook to b1. So this is uh, a, horrify, a horrifying position for black to, uh, to, to deal with. Okay, so we've refuted castling. We've refuted um, queen to e7. We've refuted queen to d7. And so we still have two moves left. There's d5 and g6. So d5, I think we can dispose of fairly quickly. Bishop takes d5, again with the mate threat. Let's say castles, knight f3, knight d7. Now bishop to g5, knight f6, takes, takes, and simply rook to f1. And here, white is just up a pawn and uh, has a, a terrific position as well. So uh, really nothing for black to hope for here. So that leaves us with the move played in the game, g6, which might be the best move. Uh, certainly it's the hardest to bust, and uh, I'm not sure that I found a clear-cut win against this. Okay, well, white needs to play queen to h6. This is uh, undoubtedly the, uh, the right move. And now black has uh, a couple of principled moves. So I'll show you the game continuation here. Um, so my opponent thought for a long time here and was uh, too... too worried about moves like bishop to g5 and queen to g7 and so he decided to uh, to, to go back to uh, apologize as it were for the knight's sally to g4 to f2 earlier but the problem is that uh, with the tempi that he surrendered it's not surprising that that I'm going to have um, a decisive way to, to uh, con conclude my attack so I played queen to g7 he played queen to f6 and now I have the little tactical blow, bishop takes f7. So this, um, this wins material here. The problem for black is that, uh, well, first of all, of course, he can't play king to e7 because a knight to d5 check. If he plays king to d8 instead, then um, I might be able to play simply bishop to g5. I mean, there may be even better ideas, but, but there's at least that. And then after queen takes g5, I play queen takes h8, and then uh, queen to e8. Actually, that's a pretty good idea since it's simply uh, mating. So, um, for example, okay, let's just go ahead and play this through here. King d8, bishop g5, queen takes, queen takes, king here, queen e8, knight e5. Oh, it's not a mate. Son of a gun. And he runs out the, uh, the side door here. All right. Of course, I like my position quite a lot, but... Um, it's not mate, so let's see if we can do better here. Yeah, um, no, knight d5, king f7. Gee whiz. Okay, trying to calculate this as quickly as I can. Yeah, a lot of promising continuations, but maybe there's no, no mate there. All right, but, <laughs> okay, I mean, this, this, knight here, here. I mean, if nothing else, I can probably play moves like knight to f3 or knight to h3. Let's try knight h3 so we can keep f2 covered. And indeed, where does his queen go? Eh, perhaps h4 is sufficient. All right, all right, so maybe knight f3. Okay, yeah, yeah, knight f3. Because there's no big deal about bishop f2. So bishop f2, just king e2 is, is fine. And, okay, so the only safe square looks like h5. And, um, okay, now maybe here, here, and queen f8. Okay, so that's uh, a possible continuation. Clearly black is in huge trouble. So in the game, my opponent played queen f7. Probably it's the best move he's got. Queen h8 check, king d7. Now I played knight h3, so I'm again covering f2 and also in the hopes of being able to exploit the f-file, which, in fact, uh, could have happened. So g takes f5, knight g5, hitting the queen, and also uh, I have the option now of just playing queen takes h7, probably trading queens off if I uh, feel at all concerned about uh, his attacking prospects. So he played queen to g6, and now I could, st I could play queen takes h7, but I decided, all right, maybe I can um, get knight to d5 in for free. 
before I worry about the exchange. And now I'm threatening queen takes c8 followed by knight e7. Little exchanging combination. Again, if nothing else, maybe there's going to be even better, but uh, I don't have to worry about his attack because I always have this simplifying idea. So he played c6, and now I decided I could even do one better and played e takes f5. And here my opponent resigned. Of course, I'm a rook, a rook up, um, a rook and a pawn up, if I want to be uh, really precise, I guess. And um, also the point is that after e takes f5, if queen takes f5, now this um, wins a piece, a further piece. So my opponent's uh, resignation was entirely appropriate after e takes f5. All right, well, but let's go back. So after queen to h6, black has um, other ways of defending. So two other moves, I think, that, that are, are worthy of consideration. One is the uh, immediate knight takes h1, just grabbing the material and hoping for the best. And the second is king to d7, so getting out of dodge before the, uh, the swarm shows up. Okay, so let's take a look at each of these in turn. So uh, knight takes h1. Well, here I think um, white has a couple of promising approaches that he can try. So one is queen to g7, just jumping right in. And the second is development with bishop to g5, and then waiting to see what to do with the uh, about queen to g7 possibilities. All right, so if queen to g7, for instance, uh, here, okay, probably rook to f8 is best. And after knight to f3, white certainly has adequate compensation, but... Whether there was a win or not, I'm not sure. Um, but one kind of interesting line, instead of rook to f8, is with king to d7. So again, the, the policy of running away. And here I think white can track down the black king and, and get him. So queen f7. Um, if queen e7, simply bishop to e6 is uh, quite strong. So king c6, knight f3, say knight f2, queen checks. And now, okay, if king to d7, then we have mate in two like this. And if king to b6, then we get to, to give mate also with checks. And uh, actually, this is kind of cute. So see if you can figure out how white to move mates very quickly. All right, so I think it's probably mate, mate in three in the slowest lines. But um, anyway, the move that, that executes this, I think... It's bishop to a4 check. So kind of a, an attractive idea here. If, if king a6, then queen c4 followed by queen to b5 mate. If um, king to b3 instead, then queen to b3 followed by, inevitably, um, queen to b5 mate. So black can play bishop to b4 and then moves king. But anyway, it's, it's all very simple. And then the, uh, the attractive point of all this is if king takes a4, queen to b3 is mate. All right, but as, as we mentioned, after queen to g7, rook to f8 is best, and uh, it's still not fully clear. So I think the best move for white here is bishop to g5. So just bringing another piece into the attack. And here, okay, black uh, clearly has two moves that are worth considering, moving the queen to d7 and blocking the attack with f6. All right, if queen to d7, now knight to d5, again threatening to, uh, to win the queen. And um, if queen to c6, hopefully you all know this trick. How can white to move win black's queen? Maybe he doesn't need to. Maybe queen g7 and knight f6 check is decisive. But if we're just concerned with winning the queen at the moment, how can we do it? Well, the answer is bishop to b5. So we have a skewer. And, of course, it could be eliminated with queen takes b5. But now we have this fork, knight takes c7 check, and we win the queen. So if black wants to save the queen, the only way to do it was with queen to a4. But now, queen g7. Black does need to uh, to save the rook here. Because if you play something like, I don't know, bishop takes g1, then again we've got the same mating pattern that I mentioned before. So queen h8, queen d8, queen c7, nice knowing you. So, rook f8. Now knight takes c7 check. And queen takes f8, and white's winning. So it's um, the struggle continues. It's not an immediate mate, but the threat of queen to d8 followed by queen to uh, to c8, if nothing else, takes c8, 
is uh, decisive. Uh, notice also, of course, that White's threatening bishop to b5 check. This is also uh, grounds for, for happiness here. And, well, okay, that's, that's enough about this line. So White's winning here. Okay, so uh, after f6, let me see, do we discuss this? No, f6 is uh, another, this, this is actually a, a tougher line to bust. And here it looks like the best move for white, which I unfortunately already showed you, is f takes g6. So this is a very strong move. And the threat is, of course, just to play g7. And after g7, black's position just collapses um, because there's a threat to take the rook threat to queen sometimes. Bishop takes f6 is threatened, so this is horrible. So for example, f takes g5, g7, and um, black can't save the rook. So the best try is king to d7, so that way at least his queen is still covering the rook. But queen e6, queen d5. Um, if king to b6, then I'm pretty sure knight to a4 is going to force a, a quick mate. So king d7, now knight f3. So once more, there's the threat of knight takes e5, followed by queen to f7 mate. And this is uh, a big problem for black. What is he going to do to protect this pawn? If uh, he plays knight to c6, then queen to e6 is mate. Uh, maybe he could play queen to f6, but, okay, still, maybe white can play queen to e6, check there. So the queens get traded off, and then white takes the rook and makes a new queen. So that, yeah, that's absolutely decisive. So queen f6 is probably better, but this looks uh, absolutely devastating. Takes, 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 and um, it's hopeless. Okay, so that leaves rook to e8, but now we can see that this black rook is overloaded. It has to prevent the pawn from promoting and it has to defend the pawn on e5. So naturally, white plays g8 queen, rook takes, knight e5, and then queen f7 mate. So that's that's basically it. Okay, Black could play c6, but with white having two queens, everything is just an easy win. Okay, so going back to the position after queen h6, knight to g4 was the move in the game, and that lost fairly easily. Knight takes h1 requires some very nice play from white, but it seems to lose by force 2 after bishop to g5. But then there's the third option, the uh, preemptive flight with king to d7. And here uh, I, I want to challenge you, my listeners, to see if you can find a, a clear-cut win for white. So I, I didn't spend a great deal of time on this, but uh, I spent a bit, and uh, I found, I think, a path to an advantage, but not yet a clear win. Okay, one quick idea that I think is interesting, maybe there's something to be found here, is knight to a4. But after knight h1, takes, takes, knight f3, and f6. Uh, certainly white has compensation for the material, but whether it's uh, a genuine advantage or not, I think that's uh, an altogether different story. Okay, a second possibility here is the move bishop takes f7. And this has, in fact, been played, I think, a couple of times, at least according to the Mega Database. Maybe in correspondence it's occurred even more often. Um, at any rate, I think this, too, is uh, not altogether clear. So knight takes the rook is probably best. Check. King c6. Check again. Lots more checks. And now there's a game between Grote and Markson that saw bishop to g5. And um, and so on. So white had good compensation. Black uh, returned the material, and the game wound up a draw some moves later, about another 20 moves. So it was a good hard-fought game. But I think better than bishop to g5 might be the immediate knight to f3, again keeping the uh, the, uh, the bishop's development in abeyance for the moment. Okay, so black black's best maybe knight to d7. Now bishop to g5, queen f8 takes, takes, bishop e7. And um, it looks like black's best here is probably to return the exchange, but to prevent white from getting this dangerous passed f-pawn. And after all these captures, we end up with a position where white is slightly better, but not really very much. So his pawn structure is just a little bit better than black's, 
and that should be enough for an edge. But you know, it's a long way from a decisive advantage to be sure. So going all the way back to the position after move eight, king to d7, we've seen knight to a4 may be unclear. We saw bishop takes f7 leads to very very wild and crazy positions, but um, maybe white can obtain some small advantage there. And so a last move that I think is quite interesting is b4. And of course white's idea is twofold. So one is that he'd like to separate the bishop from the knight and in so doing um, avoid a loss of material. But also the by having the pawn up and up and out there on, on the queen side, it's going to make black's um, flight from d7 to c6 a little bit less uh, less safe and sound. So with, with white's pawn there as a, another potential attacker. Okay. So in this position, bishop to d4, I believe, is the best move. Now knight g to e2, hitting the bishop. So here black, and also giving the rook a flight square, so now black does have to capture. And here, remarkably, I think white's best move is bishop takes f7. So clearing the e6 square for the bishop to, uh, to utilize, driving the black king either back towards the center of the board where it's sure to be killed quickly or to, um, to c6 or c7 and uh, to try his luck over there. So I think black's best move is c6, giving his king the c7 square um, to run to safety. Now, we don't want to allow the king, of course, to, to, to achieve a completely safe position. So queen to, c to a g7 is a very tempting move. Threatening, in fact, mate and two with bishop to e6. The black king would have to come to e8, and then queen f7 would be mate. Unfortunately, though, after king to c7, <coughs> there's not really any fantastic discovered check. In fact, the best that white can do is bishop to g8, which occludes the uh, queen on d8's protection of the rook on h8. But still, after knight to d7, queen takes the rook, queen h4 check. Now, all of a sudden, it's white's king that is experiencing grave difficulties, while black's king is very nicely tucked away on c7, surrounded by his own pieces. So king d1, knight to d2, then queen to g5, and uh, black is clearly better here, maybe even winning. So going back to this position after c6, we saw that while queen to g7 is a very plausible and um, well-motivated idea, it doesn't seem to work. So here's another try. Knight takes d4. So we saw that that bishop proved annoying in some lines and it helping generate a counterattack against white's king. So l let's remove it. e takes d4. Now queen to g7. Again with that same mate and two threat of bishop to e6, king e8, queen f7. So king c7 once more. And now knight e2. So white keeps the, uh, the threat of bishop to g8 on tap while also preparing to bring this, this knight perhaps to the, the e6 square at some moment. Okay, knight to a6, and the idea here is simply to uh, again give the king a flight square to run away. Bishop c4, bishop d7. Okay, king king to b8 could be played, um, but after king to b8, perhaps something like bishop takes a6, b8, and then knight takes d4 gives um, white ongoing attacking chances. So the threat is to play knight takes c6. Uh, let's say bishop to uh, b7, okay, maybe d7, but then that would block the queen's defense of d6. So here you can see that white is really starting to whip up some serious play. Okay, we're hitting this. Maybe e5 will happen if, if need be to open that diagonal. Knight to e6 is uh, also a big threat because uh, that would incorporate the possibility of, of queen to c7 mate in some positions. So uh, white definitely has very real compensation here. So after bishop to c4, bishop to d7 is probably the soundest move. Okay, knight takes d4, threatening to win the queen with knight to e6 check, exploiting the uh, the pin on the bishop. Okay, so king c8, knight e6, just the same. And again, if bishop takes, then white plays bishop takes e6 check, king to b8, and um, all right, what now? Bishop to f4 and bishop to g5 both look kind of reasonable. So 
Um, the only question here, actually, this might not be so so smart because queen takes here, and now white can't take the rook because he gets mated in two moves. So queen to e3. If the king goes this way, the knight goes to f2, and that's checkmate. Or if the king goes to f1, queen f2 is mate. All right. So uh, of course we don't have to take this this rook over here, but if we're not taking it, then black should just be better. So bishop to g5 is uh, off limits. All right. So we have to try bishop to f4, I think. And um, okay, again, I'll just uh, reiterate my earlier statement that that white has genuine compensation. Now bishop takes d6, followed by grabbing both rooks, is a real threat, since the qu black queen from d6 uh, is not going to mate white's king. So this looks, I think, quite good for white. And after knight to e6, if queen to g8, then um, queen to c3. And uh, I believe white has a, a very nice advantage here. Materially, black is doing very well. He's up a rook for two pawns at the moment. Of course, the knight on h1 is probably going to fall, and um, black has plenty of other worries, too. I mean, the rook on h8 is kind of vulnerable. Among other things, white could play bishop to b2, which both forces the win of the rook, and also uh, takes a step towards clearing the, uh, the back rank. So maybe king e2 would be forthcoming, and then white could take the, the uh, knight. So um, black has lots of things to worry about. Also, maybe b5 to try to pry open some lines over on the queen side is another thing that could be in the future for um, for black to worry about. So this looks promising for white. It's not a not an outright forced win, and, and it's possible that there there could be improvements for black as well. So let me challenge you guys to uh, perhaps find find some improvements in the, in the analysis for both sides. But um, I do believe that white should be in quite good shape after f5. So it's uh, a matter of working out the variations. Some of them are very complicated and, and require some, some genuine brilliance, but, um, but they're there. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that uh, the amount of time that black is spending grabbing the rook and also the amount of extra space and development that white gains uh, while black is going on this fishing trip should be enough to uh, more than compensate him for the uh, material. So I hope you enjoyed this and found it instructive. Uh, hopefully this is something that, that you can use in your own repertoire. And again, I hope you, you'll find it uh, both entertaining and also uh, a valuable analysis exercise. So um, this is Dennis Monacrucis signing off. I'll see you next time. And um, until then, good luck and um, enjoy the shows. Take care. Bye-bye.